Welcome along to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're making a little bit of progress on some replacement lettering for the sign that we made last year. So, I made all these letters out of plywood and then I kind of tried to paint and varnish them in such a way that they would stand up to the British weather, essentially. And unfortunately, a lot of the plywood stuff has started to blow on the edges. Probably due to it being shitty, being Q plywood, frankly. So, we've got exactly the same font, exactly the same size, so I should be able to replace the lettering up there. And it should be able to sit in the same spot, meaning any finish or anything else, you know, paintwork that we've done surrounding it, should still be kind of, it should all fit together without being totally obvious that we've changed these letters. But what it does mean is that I have all these letters to cut out. So the timber that I'm using was recommended by a friend of mine who's been a joiner for 20 years. And this is an African timber, I believe, called Edigbo. He said it'll stand up to weathering outside, it won't split, and it's easy to work. And cutting through it, I have found it is relatively lightweight. So we'll see how it performs. Heaven knows I don't want to have to do this again if it doesn't work this time. Also, I like the colour of this wood, which means I'll just get away with giving it some varnish treatment and I won't have to paint it. So I did like the gold of the previous lettering, the gold paint that I put on there. I don't think that's required this time round. And also the paint has started to crack. Maybe the varnish is cracking. I don't know. One of the two is. So I'm quite happy to just go ahead and leave the natural timber colour. It's really quite nice actually. And we'll stick that up on the sign. I think I'm going to have to take the sign down though at some point in the future because there is a little bit of a leak behind the sign coming in on top of the window. So I'll probably do that and then I can work on the bench to put these letters on there. But that is literally going to be weeks away. It's not going to happen in this video. So today I'm just going to spend a bit of time whittling away and cutting out the letters. So here's a strange thing that's happened today. We've got a hole in the pipe or the valve on the acid tank. I can only assume that that's the PAA eating away at perhaps a copper rich portion of the brass. They look like stainless steel don't they? No, they're not, obviously. So we're going to have to pull this off at some point today. Change this whole section out. Or just at least the valve. And also, we've got some HyperQuest in this tank. And we're recirculating to get rid of some particularly dirty casks. Uh, get rid of the grub inside some particularly dirty casks. So these are some of the Boggart Hole ones that we've had in storage for well over two years now. And they've never been used. And if I just grab a torch, I said they've never been used. They've never been used by moi. But they have been used by, obviously, Boggart Hole or whoever else. So you can immediately see the state of these casks and the only way to move that is hyperquest it and if that doesn't work then we're gonna have to soak it with a neat solution of hyperquest overnight which ultimately may damage the steel but we've got no choice so let's give it another 10 minutes an important thing to note with HyperQuest is you don't want to be using it over 40, 50 degrees because you'll basically lose all the chlorine out of it. Right, bud. And uh, yeah, it'll flash the chlorine off, which makes it completely, well, not HyperQuest anymore. So this is where we are with the, uh, with the lettering. Not started on the big pieces yet. 
it's taking ages but I'm just coming back to it as and when throughout the day uh, so I suppose we'll pick this up on another video keep this one short and sweet and uh, yeah catch us again in a couple of days maybe thinking about going on a few walks with the dogs and doing some videos for that a couple of local nature reserves close to us as we're coming to the end of the year now so generally for me that's the most exciting part of the year I like going out doing a little bit of foraging you know looking for mushrooms and that kind of thing don't necessarily always pick them because I don't eat a lot of wild mushrooms um, but I just enjoy identifying and spotting them so I think we'll do a bit of that in the next few videos and then uh, hopefully have time to do a little bit more footage in the brewery as we move into October we shall see we shall see anyway thanks for watching boys and girls and uh, yeah I'll see you on the next one Cheers.